So you think you're hungry, okay? I got a story for you. And I really just listened to the, to the end, okay? So um, the summer after my freshman year in college, I, um, I go on vacation with my mom to Chicago to visit her mom. She's talking very strange about having to go to Chicago, having to go to Chicago. So we go to Chicago and she ends up passing away um, that summer and she knew she was passing, all right? And what I didn't understand, I didn't understand. Like I didn't, I was in, it was, everything just happened so fast. I mean, one minute we're on vacation, next minute I'm in hospital rooms, next minute they're telling me that she only has a couple of days. All these things are going on and I'm not processing it because I feel like I'm like, it's not real. Like it's just not real, okay? And my grandmother, I didn't realize at the time, was going through early stages of dementia or whatever that was. I didn't understand it. But when I told my grandmother what was going on with my mom, she actually kicked me out of the house because we went to visit her. So she kicked me out of the house. So one morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, she kicks me out of the house. So I have my bag, my suitcase, on the front steps, and there was a park across the street from where she lived. So I found some money in my mom's purse and I go across this, I go to the little corner store and I go buy a loaf of Wonder Bread and a, they had a jar of like, it was like uh, jelly and peanut butter mixed together. I don't even know what it was called. And that's what I ate. So I'd spend my days going to the hospital to visit my mom, I'd wash up, then I'd go back to the park. And I'd sit in the park with my Wonder Bread sandwiches until it was time to go back to the hospital because it wouldn't let me stay the entire time. And I remember I stayed awake because I was scared to get robbed. This is the truth, I was scared to get robbed, so I'd stay awake. So I was laying on, I was kind of sitting upright on a bench, kind of like the benches behind me, the bench I'm sitting on right now. I had my bag with me underneath the bench with my foot attached, like touching it. And that's what I did. And I did this for days. And um, it's crazy because you're in fear and of like, and grief all at the same time. Total grief. I don't, I'm, my, the doctors are telling me any day now, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I have no idea what I'm going to do. Anyway, this to say, I'll never forget the day that I realized I'd run out of food. Now I'm in fear, I'm in grief, and I'm hungry. And I can very clearly remember, by the way, if you ever, you, for those of you who know me, you know I'm always in a supermarket. I'm always in a supermarket because I remember that feeling of being hungry. I do. I remember that fear, hunger, grief combination. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You may have one of the two. You may have two. You may have one of the three, I should say. You may have two of the three. But you know what I'm talking about. And I'll never forget the day it was about five o'clock in the morning um, that I sat there on that bench, I had nothing to eat. And I couldn't go to my grandmother because she wouldn't let me in the house. And I didn't know anybody out there. At the, I didn't know anybody out there. And I was just stuck. In my mind, I was stuck. I'm sure there was other options, but when you're in the drama, sometimes you can't see your way out of the drama. So I'll never forget the day that I actually, for the first time, looked at this. One second. I'll never forget the day I looked at the garbage can. And it was the same can that I'd sat next to all those other days that I was sitting in the bench, or sitting on the bench in the park. And I remember thinking that I'd thrown away a crust. I used to hate the ends of the bread, so I'd throw away the ends of the bread. And I remember thinking as I sat in that, on, that, on that bench in that park, what I wouldn't give for the ends of the bread that I'd thrown away. 
Why am I telling you this story? I've actually never told this story. I'm telling the story because, number one, I'd never been that hungry in my entire life. I'd never. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't think straight. As, as over here, I know that my mother's passing away. I'm also just so hungry. And it just so happened that at that moment, when I was looking at the garbage can, a neighbor, my grandmother's neighbor, called me. Because she had seen me, I didn't know that she had seen me sitting in that park morning after morning and said, come here. And I went to her door and she said, are you okay? And I just remember I just bust out crying. And I told her what's happening. And she allowed me to come inside and she fed me. She allowed me to sleep on her couch. Number one, food never tasted so good. Number two, I don't think I'd ever slept that hard. And in that moment, she gave me safety. Now, what I didn't understand was all those times that I was sitting there, I was just praying to God. I didn't realize this was God answering that prayer because I couldn't see at the time what I see now. So let me bring this all together for you. When you're at your worst, you have to keep your faith. When everything is closing in, you have to keep your faith. I was praying, but I wasn't looking for an answer. That may sound strange. I was so in the problem. I never recognized and thought to myself that that lady knew my grandmother and was willing to take me in. I never, I, that was never even an option in my mind. But I was praying. And I didn't know at that time how faithful God would be. In that moment, I could only see what was wrong. I'm gonna give you a couple of things. Number one, I already gave you. You have to keep your faith. You have to. Number two, you have to learn. What I learned during that season was financially, we had no options. People spend more time arguing over the funeral costs than dealing with the fact that someone that we loved was no longer here with us. I learned a lesson in money because I had no options. I couldn't go to the machine and just take money out. I had no money. I realized that my mom, as hard as she worked, because she worked hard, but in the career she had, there was no, she didn't really make money. So the money that was in her purse was what we, was what we had. And that motivated me, that drove me. That drove me, that drives me. Because I could still remember, still to this day, you know, almost every day I go to the grocery store. And almost every day I cook. And my children don't understand why I do this. But I know what I remember very clearly sitting in that park looking at that garbage can. And 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 justifying that there's pro it'll probably be okay. I remember I could I feel I feel it now as I'm doing this video. So the second the second thing you have to get is that money is not a thing to pursue just for money's sake it's because of the things that you don't know that will come one day that you're going to need to deal with and number three at the end of the day at the end of the day you can have the faith yes money is important but both those things require work you've got to be willing to put in the work and if you think you're hungry the question is are you really are you willing to do whatever you have to do, legally and ethically, of course, 
to make sure that you and your family are provided for so that you never have to look at the can. And the can is relative. Some of you have options. You can go live with family. You, can do, you, you have options, and that's great. I'm glad you have options. But what if you had no options? What would you do then? Are you in a position? Are you right now in a position? And if not, are you willing to do what you have to do to be in a position? So God forbid any moment of your life, something out of the blue happens, you're in a position to at least in that moment not have to think about how you're going to provide, how you're going to eat. People ask me why I do what I do. Those are the reasons. And now I look around and I see other people and I love, I, 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 I love being able to have this conversation with you. I don't love what created this conversation. But I love that I'm able to have this conversation because number one, I learned God is real. You can have whatever belief you have, but for me, for me God is real. Number two, prayers get answered. But number three, you have to put in the work to get the things that you want to make sure that the people that you love and care about are protected. So, to that lady who was willing to uh, take me in, I told her thank you many times to God for answering that prayer. Thank you. And to all of you, how hungry are you really? And are you willing to do what it takes to make sure that you and those you love are provided for no matter what? I hope you are.